Hi, my name is Nora Spitak and this is weekly update number four. And uh, this week I want to talk a little bit about something that's coming up actually. Um, so I'm going to be taking two classes at my local high school and as such I have to have a student ID. So of course I have to go to picture day, which is uh, going to be coming up this week. So they have the picture day outlined and of course uh, it's part of the course that when you take a picture, you have it against your blue background, they put it against a few other backgrounds, they send you an enticing little sheet with all of your different prints and ask you, hey, you want to pay $24.95 or some of the ridiculously pricey number to get a lovely um, couple of these shots. Now, to me, this is just one of the many long list of things that schools want you to pay for. Uh, if you think about it, it's not just picture day and them wanting you to um, some sort of outside vendor asking you, hey, do you want some of these beautiful snapshots of your child? Um, but it's also, if you think about buying dance tickets to prom, homecoming, or uh, informal dances, or if you think about um, maybe even taking a class and having to pay an extra fee. I know that lots of classes, uh, horticulture for instance, $40 fee. I took cooking last year, $25 fee. Um, and so a lot of schools will make you pay for all sorts of things, whether it's outside vendors asking you to purchase your yearbook, your um, photos, or it could be the school itself wanting you to pay for an ASB card or um, dances, then it's kind of surprising how much money ends up changing hands in something that we call public education. And as you go up into secondary uh, or college education, it becomes even more apparent. The fact that at our state universities, that students can be paying, you know, like $20,000, $30,000 if you consider, you know, meal plans books, these are prices which would have used to be found only in private universities. And so uh, you see that public education is really turning out to be something not so very public after all. And it's not just about um, vendors or dances or any of that, and I understand that obviously there are fees that have to be paid, things that have to be bought, but rather where our priorities are. The fact that we're subsidizing oil rigs or we're paying money uh, for you know wheat subsidies when we're not even allowing students who can't afford to go to college to get a good education, and I think that this really shows up kind of uh, shows how messed up we are as a nation with our priorities when you compare it to places like Canada. American students are going to Canada for college education, something I saw a news story on in ABC News a few months ago, because even for international students, going to college in Canada can be cheaper. So I think it's really time that we start thinking about how do we make public education more public and truly accessible to all, because education is, and I know it's a bit trite, the great equalizer. So that's my uh, snippet of thought, <laughs> well, my thought snippet for the day. Um, that just sort of came about, thinking about picture day, thinking about um, always getting, um, I remember my sister would get this sheet of her, you know, against orange background, against a blue background, against a gray background, and you know, it's like, choose the print that you want to order, and it's for some ridiculously pricey number. So. Uh, I thought uh, another thing is the amount of influence that vendors, for instance, like Life Touch, it does all these photos, um, or the yearbook companies, Jostens, or there's quite a few, all the influence that they have to collect students' money. And I think that um, sometimes school districts can be hyper worried about, say, a community event. You know, you have to submit a flyer through a procedure and make sure that it's not affiliated with any sort of sketchy organization, and it's quite a long approval process. But when it comes to vendors wanting money, uh, when it comes to yearbooks charging $50, $60, or vending machines selling Coke and Sprite and all sorts of sugary drinks, no problem with that. And again, priorities. So, yeah, I'm hoping that that wasn't too rant-like about um, everything that, that goes on, all the money that changes hands, but I think it is sort of an important issue to consider. And I've written a few blog posts, not quite directly on that topic, but sort of touching on uh, other aspects of education. So that's obviously something very important to me. The other thing that I really wanted to mention uh, was that I was looking through old videos on Vimeo and I found this one from Pale Blue Pictures, uh, that, a documentary film actually that covered my sister Adriana and my trip to Orlando, Florida with our family. So it, we went there so that I could speak at Full Sail University in Orlando 
which was a really exciting trip and uh, we got to stay at the Hard Rock Hotel, go to Universal Studios, Disney World and everything. But it was just a really well done film. Um, I encourage you to uh, look it up, it's called My Sister and I. You can find it on Vimeo.com if you just search Adora Talk or My Sister and I. And uh, I just really appreciate how they did all these shots and were zooming in and out of focus. And that made me think of another thing. Um, you know, when you look at a documentary film and you see all these amazing things that they're able to do with a camera and with text and with sound, um, matching up voiceovers, all that, then you don't know how to describe it. I'm saying things like they were, things were going in and out, sort of blurry. Okay, I'm sure there's a technical term for that. But it seems like when you're talking about other people's fields of which you have sort of limited knowledge that it's almost like speaking another language. And something that really highlighted this for me today was I was um, having a Skype conversation with Alexander Pryor, the internationally recognized um, conductor and composer. He's 18 or 19. I'm still on figure that out. Um, and he's coming to speak at the conference TEDx Redmond. And I was just really excited to be able to talk with him because he's obviously super passionate about the issue of music and music education for young people and so he was talking about some great composers and um, it, it almost felt like it was speaking another language. So whenever you talk with someone who is really interested in what they're doing or, or whenever you're, I guess, kind of intruding in someone else's area of expertise, it always feels like you're going to a different country because there are so many different terms, understandings, people's names that you might not recognize um, that would be very well known to anyone, say, in an area. So that's just an interesting thought. What are some circles or fields that you're in? So say, um, if you are in the architecture field, you know, you're going to know all the names of the famous architects. But for someone like me, then I might not. So what are the kind of circles or fields that you inhabit? So for instance, um, I guess you could say that I kind of go about in education circles a little bit because I go to so many education conferences. So the names of um, Bob Marzano and Alan November and um, trying to think of other sort of education celebrities. Well, basically these are uh, the education world's version of celebrities. But who, walking down the street, if I just randomly ask you, hey, who's Bob Marzano? Blanks there, right? So that's what I mean by who's famous in your circle. Um, and I think that it's worth kind of um, going in between from time to time. A lot of parents, for instance, might find themselves doing a lot of research about education circles when really the circle they are in is more business or technology or whatever. And the great thing about TED, and by extension the TEDx events, like the conference I'm organizing, TEDx Redmond had to put a plan for it, is that um, these conferences don't inhabit one circle or two circles, or really even three circles. They supersede all that and it becomes just ideas worth spreading. So there's no, um, hey, let me mention so-and-so who's famous to these people but not to these people. It's making everything understandable and relevant to everyone, no matter what circle or field you come from. So that's my little weekly update. I hope that you've enjoyed hearing my uh, thoughts on schools, vendors, money uh, in education, as well as that trip to Orlando, Florida, and um, some thoughts on circles, fields, TED, and TEDx conferences. So what have you been up to this week? Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be seeing a new video in exactly seven days. Thanks.